Hi there. Welcome back for a new week. Uh, hope you had a nice weekend. Hope uh, for the moms uh, in your life that Mother's Day went well. Uh, I know that in uh, in my life, uh, other than you know uh, Mother's Day, uh, the trails are back open in uh, L.A. parks. I don't think Glendale's are open yet, but if you like to hike the trails in Griffith Park and uh, other other major city parks, they are back open. Uh, on Saturday, it seemed seemed pretty crowded. Uh, Sunday, I I was in the park on my bicycle, and uh, it didn't seem quite so crowded. Although with the bike, I wasn't up on the trails. Hey, we've already got five people in the room. That's pretty good. Looks like people are. Anxious to get things started. Hello, Clara. How how you doing? How you doing? Well, I'm going to do a couple of things that are maybe a little bit different uh, this week. I, I don't think jarringly so, but uh, you know, try to try to make the course a little. Um, oh, I don't know if rigorous is the word, but you know, doing as, as you'll see, doing some stuff that's just a little bit different. So, who else is in the room? We got Clara, I know that. All right. Well, it's about time to begin, so I'll begin. Got a full agenda here. All right. First thing is, hi, Sophia, how are you? Oh, I'm doing just fine. Uh, the Associated Students Events Calendar has been posted in announcements, and it's uh, it's quite a thing. Uh, GCC Pride Week continues. Uh, Asian Pacific American Heritage Month continues. Uh, student elections are about to happen. Uh, I've already had a, um, been contacted by one former MassCom 101 student who may be asking to have a campaign video uh, put up a link to it in the announcements for this course. Now, if I do that for one candidate, I should do it for all of the candidates. So if you or a friend of yours is running for student body office and you would like to make a little campaign video, send me the link and I'll put it in announcements. I mean, I can't endorse any candidates. But if you have a, a, a video that you would like to, you know, have a link to it as part of your campaign, send it to me and I'll put it in the announcements. Um, also, on the Associated Student Event Calendar, uh, it was mentioned that, uh, that they have career development events. You know, especially during this time where you guys are at home a lot and you're, you know, you have time to kind of figure out where your life is going. Two things that I, I think that you should take advantage of at Glendale College. I mean, there's other things too, but two things you may not have thought of is one, uh, career development services uh, that we have at the college, you know, to, to kind of help you think about uh, uh, career choices. Uh, the other thing is our transfer center. And I, I posted the transfer center bulletin a couple of weeks ago. But really, when you think about students such as you who are taking transfer level courses like MassCom 101, your job right now is to get to Cal State wherever or UC wherever or some private uh, university. And the transfer center counselors who, you know, now they will be working with you virtually, but still, they're very, very good at what they do. And you know, hand them a problem. Say, here's where I am in my studies. You know, I'd like to go to UCLA or, you know, where wherever it is that you'd, you'd really like to go. And, you know, talk to them about how feasible that is or what you would need to do to be a, a good candidate to get to where it is you want to get to. And then, of course, there's also the money part. You know, how, how do you work that out? So, yeah, career development and the transfer center. I think those would be two good things to uh, 
you know, kind of pursue while you're in this sort of, I don't know, captive environment that we're all in. All right, next announcement. Uh, I am waiting for an email from Dr. Viar about the uh, the fall semester. Um, you know, the, the odds are that we will at least be starting it remote. Uh, as for the summer session, that is all going to be remote and distance ed. Uh, if you have not signed up for summer classes yet, do so soon. They are filling up quickly. You know, what is what is typical uh, when the economy turns down, when people are thrown out of work, is community college enrollment goes up. And as community college enrollment goes up, seats in our classes become harder to come by. So, yeah, try to try to sign up sooner rather than later. Hi, Guy. How you doing? How you doing? Up next, supplemental instruction. Tomorrow, Stephanie on Discord will be going through Chapter 11, the advertising chapter. So that should be pretty lively. Up next, this is one of the things that I'm doing that's um, a little different. I'm going to have uh, an experimental office hour today. You know, I don't you imagine flasks and beakers and so forth. No, no, no. Uh, I, I'm going to do a Zoom office hour. And I probably won't do it for the whole office hour because, as you know, Zoom is public. So if you have something that you want to talk to about, you know, talk to me about your grade or something, we can't really do that over Zoom. But um, I have put the invitation to today's kind of tentative, experimental Zoom office hour in the announcements. So if you want to participate in that, uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's, I think, the top announcement uh, uh, at the moment. So we'll see what happens. I'll probably get, you know, a couple of people stopping by, and I'll probably be, you know, ridiculously inept at the technology. Who knows? Might even get Zoom bombed. Yeah, it could happen. It could happen. Uh, next announcement. Did you not turn in your term paper? Well, it's not the end of the world. If your term paper is late, uh, email me. You know, I, again, this would be something where Zoom would be a little too public for that. But uh, if if you had an issue that kept you from turning in your term paper, uh, email me. We'll work something out. I've been going through them. There are a lot of very fine term papers. There are other term papers that they're not quite there yet, but you can see that the the basics of doing a good academic paper are are there, you know. And, and so, when you see that, uh, you know, you you know there's a lot of potential. Um, let's see. Oh, next thing, quiz number three is coming up. Yes, it'll be available to you next week. The third quiz will be like the other two quizzes. It'll be multiple choice. You'll have a couple of times to be able to take it. It'll be easy. Uh, it'll cover the first three chapters after the midterm exam. So that would be television, internet, and advertising. So quiz number three coming up next week. On to the question of the day. This, let's see how this lights up the chat box. I don't know. This may do really well or it may not. Today's question of the day, you know, I thought that I should make it about term papers, right? Because your term paper was just due. And uh, while you're thinking up your answer, I will tell you a little, I'll tell you my answer. Now, what's the question, right? The question is, what is the biggest or weirdest or most memorable paper you have ever written? What is the biggest, weirdest, or most memorable paper you have ever written? And what made it memorable? Now, as you're thinking about that, I'm going to show you this monstrosity. Oh, gosh. This is my dissertation. Yep. To get to be a PhD, 
you got to write one of these. <laughs> um, remember when we were talking about the, uh, the history of the book industry and uh, writing surfaces? This isn't really on paper. This is on vellum. Vellum is a latter day and lower priced version of the animal skin surface that they used on those early European books. And the reason is my dissertation and everyone else's is expected to be in the dusty catacombs of the university library, you know, essentially forever, right? And, and so there's a copy of this, I guess, you know, somewhere in the fourth basement of the Doheny Library at USC. And, you know, I'm, I'm a big fan of, 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 uh, of term papers, of research papers, because I think it really gets you focused on trying to figure out what's good information and what isn't good information. How can I take sometimes conflicting sources and weave it together into a coherent whole? And I, I hope you got a good taste of that with, uh, with your term paper. So let's light up the chat box. What, uh, what is the biggest or weirdest or most memorable paper you have ever written and why? And I will sip water while you do that. No, this is not a ventriloquism act, if, if you were wondering. Well, this one really isn't going anywhere. Is oh, okay, Sophia, the most memorable paper she has written is one about political philosophers and their philosophies. Oh, so Sophia, who were, who were some of the political philosophers? Uh, Edmund Burke, uh, Immanuel Kant, uh, gosh. Um, oh, who's the, um, the, the, the prince, the Italian guy? Ma Machiavelli. Did, did you write about Machiavelli? What, who, who else? What's, what's the, the biggest or weirdest or most memorable term paper you have ever written? Or just paper in general? Michael is saying last minute final paper for high school. First and last time that, that he wrote a paper overnight with no sleep. Oh, that, that sounds, yeah, brutal. I'll, I'll give you a fun one. When I was in college, not grad school, you know, by the time I was in grad school, I don't know if you can see this, but I did have a computer by grad school. And this was on like an old, you know, like, N late 1980s, you know, dot matrix printer. But when I was an undergraduate, we were still using typewriters for our papers. And sometimes when you would organize them, you would just take a ruler and tear up the pages and rearrange the paragraphs. And if you were in a terrible hurry, you know, you just tape together the paragraphs, photocopy it and turn in the photocopy. But, you know, usually I would have notes on it and stuff. So then I, I just retype it. Uh, let's see, uh, Guy, uh, mine would have to be about the American dream. Oh, that sounds like a good topic. Um, the topic was so vague, our professor didn't describe it much and everyone failed it. Gee, you know, sometimes, you know, I don't know what your professor was going for and I don't know what the top, what the subject was, but if it was left vague, then I would take that as meaning, what is the American dream to you? You know, and you know, there, there's kind of this cliche idea of what it is, but I, I think maybe the true dream is that you can make it your own. Yeah, and Guy, I, I can understand where that would be frustrating, but I don't know. It could also be liberating, right? You just go with what you feel it is. Uh, Stefan, I had to write a paper about architecture structures. Oh, do you mean like, I don't know, Frank Lloyd Wright designed homes or interesting skyscrapers around the world, the Chrysler building in New York, you know, that kind of thing. 
Anyone else have a have a unusual uh, paper that they did? Okay, we got off to kind of a slow start, but we've had some. Oh, you wrote about Frank Lloyd Wright. You know, we have some um, not just Frank Lloyd Wright uh, structures, but also Lloyd Wright structures. Lloyd Wright was his son uh, around here. Um, Frank Lloyd Wright, uh, the Hollyhock House in Barnstall Park, was recently named a World Cultural Heritage Site. And, you know, I, I feel a great deal of pride about that because I, as a kid who went to Los Feliz Elementary, and in those days, the walkway under Hollywood Boulevard was still open. So after school, when parents didn't know what kids were doing, you know, half the time, uh, you would sneak out after school, take the walkway under Hollywood Boulevard and just tear around Barnstall Park. Uh, let's see. Uh Clara, I, I had to write a term paper about culture shock. Uh, did you have culture shock <laughs> writing the paper about culture shock? <laughs> Stefan, he, he's one of your favorites. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, Stefan, one of the things about the Hollyhock House, it's, it's kind of fun, was that when he designed it, he had this uh, kind of like outdoor fountain where the water came inside and I think it circulated near the fireplace or something and it was a great idea apparently in real life it, it seldom worked <laughs> but it was a great idea great idea okay uh now let's get to the media note and the chapter today's media note uh goes along with the advertising chapter that you just that you just finished. And uh, the media note is entitled The Psychology of Selling Cars. And, you know, what you find is with very slick, high budget national advertising that uh, they're not really selling the product. They're selling a dream. And then they're shoving the product in there. I mean, think about car ads where the dream may be that the car makes you more attractive or it makes you appear to be successful or it makes you appear to be athletic, you know, or, 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 or something, or a good parent. You know, you think of those Michelin tire ads with a baby in the tire. You know, that's about, you know, you're a good parent. Uh, so anyhow, there are two car ads that will be linked to uh, in this media note, and you are to watch them. And what's really going to be a little bit different about this is that your media note quiz will not be three multiple choice questions. It will be three questions that you will answer in a text box. Uh, I would say answer these three questions no more than three sentences per question and separate each of them into a paragraph. In other words, for the first question, two or three sentences, next paragraph, answer the second question, next paragraph, answer the third question. Uh, this gets us in, into a little deeper learning than you can do in multiple choice. So, I'm going to try that, see how it goes today, and I may use it occasionally. So that's the media note. And then for your, uh, for your uh, lecture today, we are going to get into Chapter 12, Public Relations. And I want you to go through the first half of the Public Relations chapter. I want you to go up through the slide that says, Who are the publics? That should be about 17 minutes into the lecture. All right, let's see. Uh, all right, well, this is, uh, this is good. Um, I'll be over on uh, Canvas chat in a moment. Any parting shots before I end the live stream? Okay, guys, see you over on Canvas.